Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Art Starts explores textures, finding and copying textures. The logo for Explorers is red and black, and the O in Explorers is the lens of a giant magnifying glass. The text on screen reads, This week is a little different. K, this week's Art Starts Explorers host, will be starting outside. If you have permission, or you can go out with a grown-up, you can also explore outside for textures. If you don't want to go outside, or you don't have permission or access to go outside, explore wherever you are making. Tools for this week. Different textures. A mark making tool for when we respond after looking. A piece of paper. The video shows a small garden with gravel. Kay walks into the park, an adult with graying hair and shaved sides and top pulled back in a ponytail. Kay wears blue jeans, a similar colored hoodie, and a black shirt with a white I love you hand sign in white on the front. Kay is white skinned and is about 170 centimeters or five foot six inches. They crouch and walk out of scene. The park has a forsythia tree, a shrub with pale green leaves growing on both sides of the branch. Kay walks in front of the bush and begins to sign. Kay looks around and then pulls down a red mask with black Star Trek symbols. They smile. A close-up on Kay's face reveals two piercings in their nose and lip and one on their tongue. They have dark brown eyebrows and a thin line of lip and chin hair. Kay gestures for the viewer to follow them. The screen goes black and reads, What if I don't want to go outside, or we don't want to go outside? Kay gestures to get the viewer's attention by waving their hand. Kay gives thumbs up and the screen goes black again. The text reads, When we explore outside, how can we practice respect? Kay, now back outside in the park, now wearing a pair of aviator glasses, waves at the viewer again.
The screen fades to black and the text reads, What textures do you see? What textures can you feel? Can you hear texture? Can you smell texture? Can you taste texture? How can we explore texture outside? Minutes of view shows various scenes. What textures can you think of or find that are similar to the scenes wherever you are making? The video is not recorded with sound, but some gentle outdoor sounds will play. What textures do you hear? A short hill of long, fresh clumps of grasses in mud. A small mound of wet but dried lily turf that looks matted and potentially dead. A huge boulder in the center of a grass island in the center of the park. The grass island is lined in plastic edging that separates it from the gravel path. The underside of a cedar bush. The ground looks moist with rocks and sticks mixed in. The dirt bleeds into the gravel pathway. Kay's hand touches and caresses a small green weed that pops out at the center of the screen. The camera pans right to left over another plastic edged garden island with smooth, clean rocks similar to those you would find near or at the water. A piece of driftwood decays in a bed of soil and moss. The base of the forsythia bush crowns the hill in a pile of darker soil. The camera continues to move and zooms in on a pile of fist-sized rocks. A round and flat rock is the center of attention. Kay crouches to pick it up and then examines the rock, looking at the camera. The rock is purple, similar to gem-like amethyst. But it is not polished. It is very smooth though, like a river rock. Kay continues to examine the rock, turning it over. Kay touches the underside of the rock. There is some dirt. They continue to look and turn over the rock. They return the rock to the ground. With a double thumbs up, they back out of scene. The forsythia, not quite in bloom, sways in the wind. A ray of sunshine scatters behind the tree and onto the gravel path. Manicured or shaped bushes are cut into round caps and line the hill behind the tree. The bushes in the background are coniferous, or bare cones, and are darker green than the forsythia's pale green, soft-looking leaves and greenish-yellow early flowers. Kay walks behind the tree. They return holding a dried stick, which looks like it could come from the forsythia plant. Kay's mouth hangs open as they grin at the stick. It is very long and splits into two branches at one end. The stick is brown and has no leaves. Kay gets close to the camera and looks closely at the bark on the broken end. They run their hands over the sides, over the bumps where small branches have been ripped or chewed off. The bark has dark spots that run up and down and looks loosely attached at this end. Kay rubs their fingers together to feel the grit from the bark. They move up the stick to a sort of elbow, showing chewed away bark. They turn and examine the stick. They move down the stick suddenly excited to show the white specks of moss that appear up the branch. They appear in clumps and are as bright as the cinch ties on Kay's hoodie. They continue to go down the stick. They raise the stick and look playfully through it. 
After touching the junction or spot where the branch forked, they spin the stick in their hands and then raise and lift it like they are weightlifting. They pivot it again and stand it up beside them. The stick is the same height as K. K feels the front of their cotton hoodie and then feels down the front of the stick. They nod as they consider the differences in texture. K returns the stick to where they found it. The scene changes showing a different corner of the park. There is a wooden bench in front of large conifer trees and flagstones make a little path to the right away from the garden. Kay enters the scene and looks around, up and down. The camera slows and zooms in as a bumblebee moves past K and into the air. K moves out of the scene, following the bumblebee. The scene fades to black and text reads, It's important that we slow down and explore the sky as much as the trees and the ground. What can you see or feel or smell when you explore the sky? Can you pick out any textures? The camera is now pointed up at the sky at a 70 degree angle showing a cloudy sky with lots of blue patches. The camera swivels away from a tall, dark green, yellow cedar tree and stops pointed at some flowering trees with a gray apartment building with yellow accent panels in front of a bright and sunny blue sky. What happens when you turn around? Can you find different textures in front of you than behind you? The camera turns 180 degrees to face in the opposite direction from before. Now the sky shows a very gray and white cloudy sky with no spots of blue. The camera slowly pans down to show a skyline of cloud-covered mountains, tall buildings, and lamp posts. Back in the park, Kay asks. The scene changes to show a bushy cedar plant. Kay runs their hand over the outside. They pull back and move past a muddy patch, showing some confidently growing spears of five-inch grass, a stout winter creeper bush, and a spindly, sparsely-leaved salal plant before pausing at a common boxwood shrub. Kay runs their hands over the leaves. It's a densely branched shrub with numerous small, smooth-edged, shiny leaves. There are new yellow sprouts peeking up from the dense green underside. The camera moves again over a path of soil, moving towards the bottom branches of a blue spruce, surrounded by medium-sized, flecked gray rocks. The blue spruce has densely growing horizontal branches that crisscross over each other. It has yellowish-brown branches from which hundreds of waxy, sharply pointed gray-green leaves or pine needles, about three centimeters or one inch long, grow radially or all around the branch shoots, which curve upwards into a little brown nub. The camera moves again past some ornamental grass shoots, some medium-sized rocks, and bushes of wild geranium surrounding a wooden staircase that leads up and out of the garden.
the camera moves to another side of the park, up against the side of a corrugated metal-sided building, focused on a Nutka rose bush. It moves down and left, and a wooden bench appears. There is a piece of garbage at the foot of the bench. The camera zooms in on the energy bar wrapper. It is about 4 inches by 2 inches, or 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters, and wraps around, ending in an overlapping seam edge of plastic. Kay indicates with their hand that the shorter edge is jagged, and that the seam has spine-like lines that run parallel. They touch the paved stone on which the bench is installed, and rub their fingers over the surface. Small pebbles and gravel have been kicked up from the path. The camera zooms in on the wrapper. What do you see? What kind of textures do you find on a candy or granola bar wrapper? The scene moves up and onto the bench. It is made of thin lengths of wood running front to back along the seat and then top to bottom along the back. Kay sits on the bench, a blue body against a light-colored wood. They run a pink hand along the wood. They feel on top of the wood. They feel between the wood and on the wood sides, pinching their hands. They run a hand, fingers spread wide, across the length of bench seat and towards themselves, as to slowly feel the spaces between the wood. They use both hands to run along the wood as if playing a harp one hand after the other. They continue that motion but move one hand onto the bench's back, running their hands in parallel. They crisscross their hands and now run along the length of the smooth but untreated wood. They pat their hands on the bench like a drum. They pluck at the wood, as if each piece was a string. They sit back and then touch the material from their jeans while they touch the bench. They touch their hooded sweatshirt, cotton and smooth, and then a fuzzy texture inside their pocket. They touch the bench again. They lean forward and pick up a small twig with a two-pronged end and a small rock. They touch the stick, then the bench. They touch the rock, and then the bench. Why do you think they do this? They return the rock to the ground, pick up the stick, and then stand up. The scene changes to show Kay outside, looking up at the sky. They smile. Kay waves us to join them. The camera changes to show the green, gridded background of Kay's drawing and cutting table. There are stickies in piles layered above. A cardboard sandwich board shows a neon sticky that reads, Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province at play. The view is from above so we can only see Kay's hands. Kay writes the word texture with some scribbles above and below the word, and then finding and copying texture on another sticky. Kay dots the letter I in finding, 
but doesn't dot the I in copying. The screen splits, showing a view of Kay sitting down at their art table, a stack of art supplies on a shelf behind them, while their hands appear at the art table again. Kay looks at the little twig from the bench. Kay turns it in their hands and looks at it. The cutting board zooms in on the twig. Kay pulls over some stickies and makes notes. Arrows are drawn to where the twig has pointy bits. Kay touches a stick with the pad of their index finger and writes, smooth and rough. Kay turns the stick over and writes, no pattern. They pull over a blue sticky note that shows a hand touching. How does your object feel? Are there different textures? Another sticky with the magnifying glass and a single eye is pulled over. What do you see? How close have you looked? Kay adds to their notes, colors, green, brown, white. Kay nods knowingly and moves the sticky notes and the twig to the side. They pull out a piece of paper from a bin behind them. They show the backside with printing on it and then crumple it for emphasis. Kay grins and flattens the paper on the drawing board. They pull out a thick pencil. Kay scribbles in the corner of the page. Kay looks frustrated initially as they push the twig up against the paper, as if to force it onto the page, but then their face changes as they consider the possibilities. They lay the page down and the twig on top, and then trace the outside with their pencil. Kay moves the twig to the side. Kay continues to look. K 
McKay looks and adds details to the outline, places where the twig broke off or had small growth. Kay runs their finger over the twig. Kay adds flecks of pencil along the length of the twig drawing, looking and touching the little stick as they go. Beside the twig drawing, they sketch out a close-up of the bark. As they observe, they draw bark and one of the little nubs of growth. They draw long lines that follow where the bark has split. They draw these lines onto the main twig drawing. They continue to add details to the drawing, shading and making the outside of the twig darker, thinning down the bark area. They draw little circles where there is growth or organic texture, which makes it stand out from where the bark drawing is smooth or speckled. They place the twig back down. Kay pauses and looks at the page, the twig placed to the left of the drawing. They compare it. It looks like a stick, but the drawing is definitely thicker than the twig. They continue to observe the differences. A pink sticky note with the words, Did you try something new? is placed beside the sketch. The video turns into a sped up time lapse of the table being cleared. Kay picks up the stick and travels back to the garden and returns the twig. The scene fades to black. Text appears. It reads Kay shares that they are not a gardener, but they have done their best to identify plants in the park garden. 
If they have incorrectly identified any plants in our video, or you know them by other names, we'd love to hear from you. Contact us at gallery at artstarts.com or visit us online on our website, artstarts.com, Facebook, or Instagram pages. A white circle with the Art Starts Explorers logo and the words Textures, Finding, and Copying appears. The Art Starts Explorers logo shows the words Art Starts in red lowercase left justified against the word Explorers. The O in Explorers is a magnifying glass. The text today was written by Kay Slater, 2022, with text and captions read by Torin.